we do have a question about your um, Donald Trump story, which is from Matt Noland. Matt says, I'd like to ask Mr. Saunders uh, what he thinks about the current political climate, specifically how this new year compares to the moment he captured his feature for The New Yorker last summer. What does Mr. Saunders make of our ever-heightening division? Yeah. We have seven hours. Is it? Is <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. No, I, you know, um, when I went to these rallies, I got a big shock because the people were really nice. It was like going to a Jimmy mm. Buffett concert. You know, and all my, my progressive friends were like, was it scary? Like, no, it wasn't. You know, it was, there was no keg, but it wasn't that scary. Um, so, yeah, so, so much has happened. I, I think basically, to me, every morning when I get up, I'm like, don't pretend that you know what's going on. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm touring, so you kind of have that temptation to have a shtick. Just almost like a mantra, I said, you don't know what's going on. This is uncharted territory for, for all of us. That's, I think, important. The second thing is I keep, uh, as I'm trying to figure out how we might resist, if, if we happen to be resistors, um, it seems to me one thing you, ha you have to keep in mind is who's suffering for, because of this. You know, There's a lot of political noise, usual, but if you look at the groups of people who are suffering, even I would say being humiliated by this nonsense, mm -hmm. I try to keep my eye on, you know, the, the, the hardworking, good, normal, wonderful people that are comprised the majority of the groups that this movement has gone after. So Muslims, migrants, mm -hmm. immigrants, Mexican, Mexican-Americans, women. Uh, and I think it's sort of, at this point, I think for me the liberal project is to every day reimagine those people as three-dimensional human beings. It's kind of a fiction project in a way to say, I don't want to talk about broad conceptions. I want to talk about uh, Naomi, you know or, or G Jean or whoever, mm -hmm. uh, that's, somehow that seems to me what's different. Uh, some people do that naturally, possibly because they actually know people like that. Mm -hmm. Other people are very happy to project about those groups in ways that are harsh mm -hmm. and sort of uh, litigious almost, you know. So that's one thing. And then I think also, I'm hearing this a lot on the road, is this question of should people who are progressives uh, continue our you know, our, our silly journey of being empathetic, compassionate, curious, you know, detail-oriented. Uh, or should we finally draw the line in the sand and resist this this cruelty? Right. And I, I just keep saying, yeah, that's right, we should, both. And, and in fact, you know, the, the ability to um, sympathetically imagine somebody who really offends you is an incredible gift. It's hard to do. But imagine if you were in a football game and you, mm -hmm. if you could mind meld with the coach for 10 minutes of the other team, that would be an incredible I mean, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to like them, you wouldn't have to enable them, but you would then have that much more power to, to resist. Right. So it's a, it's a difficult time. And I guess the last thing I, I'm thinking is that, um, you know, I've been an artist all my life, trying to be anyway. And I'm just in the last six months, I've noticed how I always flinched a bit at that. I always said, yeah, you know, writing is, it used to be important. And I'll take the leftovers, kind of, you know. And now I'm like, yeah, that's a big mistake. And I think mm -hmm. we made it culturally. I think we marginalized art. And the artistic way of thinking, which is so profound, you know, whether you're writing or reading, or, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're paying the price. I think the reason that language gets as degraded as it does now is because we neglected it. You, you know, the, the whole, like, what I think of as the Kellyanne swerve, you know. Mm -hmm. Ms. Conway, you have a duck on your head. No, I don't. That's <laughs> offensive. Why don't, why don't you like animals? You know, yes. that kind of, that, I mean, that, that a, a, culture, a, a culture doesn't accept that unless it's already been preconditioned. And one of the ways we'd be preconditioned is to get lazy with language, you know, lazy, lazy with specificity. And we'd also, um, we're suffering a lot, I think, from losing the ability to imaginatively create the world beyond our experience. Mm -hmm. That's what literature does. We, you know, you say uh, Milwaukee. We all think of something. Uh, it's not Milwaukee that we think of. We, we make a projection. So there's a certain ritual humility in saying, okay, I'm gonna think of an immigrant my, my vision of whatever that person is is not complete. Right. Uh, we've, that's a fundamentally a novelistic uh, ability. 